Okay, so welcome back. This is video number two, opening the 1988 Topps uh, big baseball card set, uh, second series. I'm actually uh, pretty confident that I don't actually have any of these cards in my current collection, other than what I just bought. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it. This is a set I've never really seen, don't have. As I went through the first you know, half of the packs, a lot of cards I'd, I'd maybe seen, I think this George Brett I've probably seen in different places, but most of the other ones I'm quite confident that I've never seen and don't have in my own collection. I've got about 100,000 cards, most of them from the late 80s, early 90s, so um, so yeah, these are all kind of new cards for me, kind of cool for my collection. Now I did open one pack already from the second, uh, second half of the box break. Um, my camera had a little issue, battery died, so I had to switch batteries, so um, here are the cards I pulled out. A few cool cards. Brett Saberhagen, who I actually got his autograph when I was a kid, uh, came to my hometown, so that was that was exciting. I love I love seeing guys that I've already got autographs from. So but let's get back into the uh, the second half of these these packs. And once again, I'm excited because I'm seeing cards that I've never seen before, um, and it's always cool to open packs from you know, man, '88. So we're talking. 30 years ago, these packs came out. So, 30 year old packs, here I am opening them for the first time. And as I mentioned in the first video, I got these from a, a card shop um, not too far from where I live, uh, about an hour away, which honestly, that's the closest card shop there is for me. And uh, I'm not going to tell you guys where it's at or what it's called. Not that I don't want to publicize um, an awesome card shop that I go to, but they've got more of these boxes and I kind of want to keep them to myself so because uh, I paid a whopping five dollars for the box so so I know I'm a big spender used my birthday money from last month to uh, to go down and buy them bought actually four different uh, sets or four different boxes to break and this was uh, since I don't have any of these in my collection I thought I'd do this set first once again I'm still I like the fact that it has the uh, the face on part of the card, not the whole card. Um, ones that are the whole card makes the autographs really kind of a pain because then guys are signing across their mouth, across their eyes. Um, but here, when you have kind of the action shot and the face, it lets you see who the guy is, but it also you know gets a little bit of a nice area for an autograph right through this area. So I like that. I like the fact that it has that little that little separation. It's funny going through and seeing Mariner cards because I'm a diehard Mariner fan, but there are names I don't recognize. Guys who were relief pitchers, maybe didn't play a whole lot. Nineteen eighty-eight. So I was seven years old when this set came out. It's funny seeing how a lot of these guys went on to be coaches or uh, roving instructors and. Know, passing their, their knowledge on in different ways. Now, I will admit, I think the uh, the 88 top set, just the regular standard ones, I like those better. But it's also partially because I think I'm a little um, biased on that since I have so many of them, been kind of a collector of that set. Now my big set, ah, Tony Gwynn, my first Tony Gwynn so far. Man, he was so good. But like I was saying, uh, my main set that I collect is 1987 Tops. That's actually the set that I got my uh, first ever complete set. It was a, a birthday gift, or a Christmas gift from my parents. Um, just like, in, I think in like 89 or 90, they got me a, a complete set, 1987 Tops, and now I make that my set that I uh, trying to get autographs from. And I've got probably about 40 of the cards signed at this point. And then uh, I just found out recently that a lot of the guys from that set who are still alive uh, signed through the mail. And so I'm going to start sending off my cards from the 1987 set to see if I can get guys to sign and see how much of that set I can get completed. Once again, another Ricky Henderson. Uh, there's another George Brett, just like on the, the box cover. Once again, thinking back, you know, I was only seven when this set was made, so 
some of these guys, I recognize their names instantly. Of course, you got, you know, Tony Gwynn and George Brett, both are Hall of Famers. Um, but a lot of guys who maybe weren't starters or weren't um, the big names that I don't recognize, I do recognize Swindell and Kevin Seitzer. I used to play RBI baseball on my Nintendo, and uh, Seitzer was always on my team, always picked, picked him on my team. Todd Worrell. Another Saber Hagen. I think he actually won a Cy Young Award. Not 100% sure on that, but I think so. Cards are, I don't know. I don't want to say they're glossy on the front, they almost have that feel, but they're definitely cardboard. Like a good good card style for autographs. Tom Browning. Opening up vintage cards is just amazing. Like I said earlier, this is these packs are 30 years old and just sat there on the shelf for for 30 years. In fact, when I went in and bought these, uh, <laughs> the uh, the shop that I went to actually has probably another 10 to 15 of them um, on the shelf, just five dollars a piece. So don't be surprised if I do another box break of of these and have a little fun, do a little giveaway. Roger Clemens, my first Clemens. Wow, he looks so different than he does now. Roger Clemens, the Rocket. Done quite a few Aussie Virgils so far. A couple King Rees. Might be my first one of that one. Candy Audi. Overall, cool set. Once again, it's not my favorite vintage set. I've actually got uh, the two Don Russ boxes that I bought and I need to do a box break with. I love those sets. Um, one is the the all red borders, and I that's just one of my favorite sets. I love those. Got a lot of autographs on those cards. And what's good, I judge cards a lot of times by how well they'll autograph. Um, the cards that are just right on, it's just the guy's face covering the whole card. I instantly don't like those cards very much just because when guys sign across their face, it just looks weird. It makes me... Uh, you know, not want to use those cards, so I, I, I try and avoid those sets as much as possible. You know, there was a Topps Heritage set that just came out a couple years ago that did that, and I did not, was not a big fan of that. But these are nice. Once again, having the uh, the action shot kind of next to the face. Oh, look at that. You got yourself another checklist. Same one as earlier. Another Brett Butler. I have to put a collection of Brett Butlers in and send those to him see if he'll sign them. Uh, he does a pretty good job signing through the mail. In fact, Norm will tell you, if you've ever asked Norm, tell you some pretty good stories about Brett. Norm was actually the uh, clubhouse manager uh, down in the minor leagues when Brett was a head coach in, in the Diamondback system, I believe. Hal Reynolds, loved watching him as a kid. Loved watching him. Rebe, another Griffey, Rich Gedman. Wish we had this a few years ago when he was uh, coaching the Arizona Fall League. He actually signed quite a few cards for me, but would love to have had a few extras. So this pack is a little, uh, 
little bit of a hot spot. Not surprised, I'm actually surprised how well these things have held up for being 30 years old. I was expecting a lot more uh, damage or issues with the cards, but the cards have actually been pretty good so far. I haven't seen any issues with the cards themselves. Packs have all been good. Johnny Red, I think that's the first one I've seen of him in my packs. Andre Dawson, the Hawk. Another checklist. I've only gotten three checklists so far. That's actually impressive. I used to hate getting these. As I mentioned before, I got one almost in every pack it seemed like. And I used them for target practice. A couple more packs to go. Another Brett Butler. So guys, if you're watching this, I know there's a few of you out there who uh, are watching just because you love the nostalgic value. I want you to let me know uh, down in the comments below what is your favorite vintage set? You know, are you talking, do you love one of the sets from the, the 80s tops? Are you looking for something in the 70s? You know, something in the 60s? What is your favorite set? Now there's a few guys out there that I've talked with that, you know, like me, they collect certain years. Um, trying to complete sets. I'm lucky because I grew up in the 80s. So for me to complete my sets, it doesn't cost me a lot of money because the cards are pretty cheap. Like I said, I paid five bucks for this this box. Could have bought a you know a couple more of them if I wanted to. So it's nice to be able to do that. Have a lot uh, a lot cheaper of a of a time to complete my sets. I know guys who are trying to complete you know sets from the 60s, early 70s. Heck, even nowadays it's can be pretty expensive to try and complete a set. Most of those cards I'm pretty sure I had already. Last pack. You guys, if you haven't had a chance, go watch the uh, the first video uh, where I open the first half of the packs. I also have a box break already on uh, the channel from the... Uh, Topps Heritage Minor League set that just came out uh, last fall. I enjoyed that set. It was actually pretty cool. That's on there. I'll have a couple more vintage sets coming out. A couple Don Russ. I think another top set that I'll be uh, opening up and showing. And I've also got interviews from a lot of uh, local players, uh, guys who are playing college ball and you know, just enjoying the game of baseball. That's what now you know what it was all about. And not bad. What a way to end my packs. Tony Gwynn one of the greatest hitters of all time. I wish he was still around. So once again, guys, this is the uh, 1988 Topps Big Baseball Cards second series. Not too bad. I kind of like it. You know, you got the uh, kind of the comic strips on the back, talking about the uh, the guy's accomplishments and things he's done. You know, neat little interesting facts. I like the. Uh, you, know, you get the, the head on there, but you also have the action shot with it as well, so it makes it nice for autographs. So overall, looking at vintage sets, and you know, once again, it's not my favorite vintage set. I love the 87 tops. I'm kind of partial to the 92 score, but that's because I used to get those for getting every time I got a base hit. Um, my my dad would give me a pack from the 92, 92 score, so love that. But this set's pretty good. This set's pretty good. I do enjoy it, so... Overall, I'd give it probably a, a B, B minus, round right in there. It's pretty good for the uh, the 80s. Once again, I'm Josh. Now you know it all. This is uh, my newest box break, and I got a few more coming your your way. So, once you click subscribe down below, so that way when the other ones do come out, you're already on the uh, the list to to see see them coming out and take a check and check them out. Well, have a good night, guys, and we'll see you guys next time.